transport officials in the U.S. state of Maryland say they will rebuild and recover from a bridge collapse in Baltimore. A cargo ship lost power and crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, destroying it. Benji Heyer has the very latest. There's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. This, the moment caught on camera of that deadly crash. C-13 dispatch, the whole bridge just fell down. Now, just over a week after the collapse, the first board meeting of Maryland's Transportation Authority. It began with a moment's silence for the lives lost and praise for those who quickly stepped in to help. Uh, our force faced an unthinkable challenge, yet our officers and dispatchers responded decisively and professionally. And they were able to get to the wreckage in approximately 15 minutes and save the life. They were able to pull a victim from the water get him to shore where he received medical care and was taken to a local hospital. That saved that individual's life. Four of the victims, though, are still missing and are presumed dead. The ship's crew survived. They remain on board, having watched helplessly as they lost power and plowed into the bridge last Tuesday. Efforts hampered by bad weather are now underway to free the vessel from the crumpled infrastructure. The federal government immediately released 60 million US dollars in emergency funding. Money the MDTA board says is appreciated but more will likely be needed. The reconstruction cost is unknown at this time. Mission first, people always. President Joe Biden insists his administration is moving heaven and earth to ensure that can happen. President Biden will travel to Baltimore on Friday to visit the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge, meet with state and local officials, and get on the ground, uh, on the ground look at federal response efforts. The president is continuing to lead a whole-of-government approach to the collapse. President Biden and his team are working with Governor Moore, the congressional delegation, Mayor Scott, and numerous state and local of officials to reopen the port, rebuild the bridge, and support the people of Baltimore. That process could take months, even years. A long road ahead. Benji Heyer, CGTN. And that does lead to a wider question. And for more on U.S. infrastructure as a whole, we're joined now by Roberto T. Leon. He is the Charles E. Vi Professor at Virginia Tech University. Thanks very much, uh, Charles, for joining us. I kind of want to get right to it. In the wake uh, of that recent uh, bridge collapse, what are your initial thoughts on the state of infrastructure in the United States? It really does show that there are weaknesses out there. Well, as you're well aware, the American Society of Civil Engineers uh, periodically issues a report card on the infrastructure and uh, in the American grading system, obviously, from A to F. And uh, there are many important pieces of infrastructure that are in the C category and sometimes even in the D, which means that they need a lot of work. However, I would say we have been making steady progress in improving the infrastructure. It is a very expensive proposition, as you well know. Hmm. The Congress uh, freed up uh, close to a trillion dollars last year, and so there are a lot of projects that are just beginning to get uh, going, and I hope that they are going to go some way towards fixing the problem. However, uh, I think that the cost is uh, much more than that trillion dollars that has been allocated. You know, and, and it's, it's much more than a bridge and a, and a giant ship that loses power and careens out of control. We mm. should point that out, that this didn't just collapse on its own. But if you think about it as well, all the rail lines, the bridges that involved all those rail lines, mm. and then the number of dams throughout the United States as well. So how is this Baltimore Bridge collapse going to influence infrastructure investment? Well, I think that uh, you pointed out to two uh, actually fairly weak uh, parts of the system. Dams in particular are something that, it, that we worry a lot about because many of them are in, on private property and are not subject to the usual regulations. Uh, and uh, again, the same thing applies to railroads. They are in private hands, so uh, they do the best they can. But in general, most of these projects, as I noted before, are very expensive and are not within the, you know, the means of these uh, organizations. I would say that uh, the positive side of, of this uh, event could be that the public really gets on behind the idea that we're going to have to spend some money, some right. serious money. And so uh, I've been telling uh, 
you know, interviewers like yourself, that my, my thoughts are that people really need to get involved, tell their um, representatives at the local, state, and federal level that this is important and that they're willing to pay for it. Uh, that's really the important thing. And the other thing is that the, one needs to be very patient because uh, to fix existing structures is sometimes even much harder and ex more expensive right. than, uh, than building new ones. But there are important reasons why we want to do that, all the way from sustainability to uh, you know, the cultural values. I think many people were surprised when uh, the cities of Baltimore said, no, that's our bridge. That's what we identify it as. Yeah. Uh, and so, so uh, again, it, it's not, it's very hard to put a value on, on yeah. pieces of infrastructure like that. Uh, Roberto, and we also talked about this figure, a trillion dollars, and who knows how long it's going to take to actually uh, repair this damage, clear the harbor, and that is raising a big question because that collapse is going to disrupt transportation and commerce uh, in the region. We do know it is an area where a lot of farm equipment is shipped into, mm -hmm. and reading before I came out here, there's also a number of ships trapped on the other side that are Sorry. critical to uh, U.S. defense as well. So talk about the economic implications of this massive failure. Well, they're obviously huge. They go, you know, the losses are, are uh, not the loss of the bridge. The losses are going to be mostly economical. I can tell you that if you look, for example, at a similar incident which occurred in Minneapolis, Minnesota in 2007, that was not a ship collision. That was an actual bridge collapse. But it was on a major highway, on an interstate highway. Right. The, the costs per day were tremendous. So if you, if you think about, I, I have not heard figures. Uh, for Baltimore, I would not be surprised when these figures start to come out in a couple of weeks. People are going to be talking on the on the five million dollar a day level. Oh boy! Uh, uh, and so, uh, because you have to, you know, the, these losses are business losses, whether direct or indirect, right? right? So we are talking about what is the additional cost of fuel, so the trucks have to take a new road. Uh, and the extra time you have to pay the, the drivers because now it doesn't take an hour, it takes two hours to go from A to B and all of that. It, it's actually very hard to calculate, but the direct and indirect uh, economic losses are, are quite significant. And as you noted, just the fact that you have ships not moving and where cargo was expected in some of the places, and that cargo might be, you know, one of the issues we have today is this just-in-time kind of uh, <laughs> operations that we have and so exactly. it, there is nothing stored uh, that they can uh, turn to it, they're waiting for the ship to get there so okay. yeah the, okay. the losses are, are going to be large Shoot. uh roberto i can't thank you enough for your insight on this uh sadly we'll probably have to come back to you and chat again about this in the not too distant future but again thank you very much for your time thank you for having me sean